but this uppercut the his neck the way it turns it immediately Bacoli comes out first of all he's walking like he's not even in the fight and he sets the tone with that speed and aggression uh and i heard people saying before he fought that his, his speed is deceptive and as i was watching him i was like oh yeah i see it now he has a very interesting style he sits nonchalantly at the edge of range letting jared anderson reach at him try to find him and in the process he's doing doing some little tricky subtle deceptive things to to mess with jared as you see jared trying to reach him with the jab and and he's sitting there at the edge of range on purpose to let him do that and then he's going to try and use his body jab right here to reset jared jared backs up and as he comes back to reclaim the territory he just lost uh bacoli tries to time him coming in so he backs him up just so he can purposely bring him back into the jab so uh a lot going on in his style very subtle that's a great word to describe his style uh subtle calm but deceptively dangerous as we're about to find out now before we continue talking about the science hit the like button subscribe and get down in the comment section tell me your thoughts about this fight now Bacoli might have the demeanor, the hairline, the clothing choice and the build and even the stance and attitude of an unk at the barbecue. But he's far more aware and crafty than all of those things would make you believe. Like, for example, he notices that Jared Anderson's jabbing and his right hand is kind of going down. So he's trying to time that jab with that lead hook. And then he also uses the lead hook to set up an uppercut later. So that lead hook, that lead hook is also pretty important. Now, Bacoli is, isn't just controlling the range of this fight. He's also controlling the pace, either by forcing Anderson to come forward or when Bacoli starts walking him down. And he's forcing Anderson to come forward. He's sitting there giving him a still target. And so when Anderson finally approaches, you see him take that step. As soon as he takes that step, Bacoli flicks out a jab. And so he's kind of controlling the entire dynamic of this fight. Now, there's a dilemma here for Jared Anderson that Bacoli is creating. Basically, if Jared Anderson wants to land his jab, he's either going to have to get closer to Bacoli, which we see is going to lead to some issues, or he's going to have to step in and Bacoli is going to give him some, some issues down that path also. So it's hard for Jared to figure out how he wants to set up ways to actually start establishing his jab. When Anderson is in Southpaw, Bacoli's lead hand becomes more active, which kind of shows that he has an understanding of that Southpaw orthodox open stance dynamic. But he sees Jared Anderson approaching again, boom, times that forward step with a jab. And then that subtlety I was talking about as he lands that jab, Jared Anderson tries to respond back with a big left hand that originally I thought landed, but you see just barely grazes by distance control he's subtly smooth but uh some of the, his his punch style and just his nonchalant nonchalantness reminds me of big george a little bit but like with some congolese spice and an extra 30 to 40 pounds very unique style and approach but again subtle smooth watch how he gets underneath this jab just just so smooth i don't know how he's for, to be as big as he is he's a little bit too smooth there are a couple of interesting things to look at when he's at range. Obviously, the, the hands are down, which does help give him extra mobility for upper body movement, which he does actually have some. Uh, but it also helps disguise punch variety. And you see him with the upper body movement getting underneath these jabs like how he did earlier. Also, him having extra distance distance gives him more time to react. So it helps with uh, defense as well. But yes, a lot of trickiness and deception in his style because the surface level details like the unk build that we described actually obfuscate his real abilities both athletically and technically again the subtleties lead hook by bacoli and he looked like he wanted to throw up but he hesitated you see him take his time to look look at the reaction he throws a left hook he's still looking he's patiently waiting he says okay if you're gonna stay down there in that horrible position and that's what he that's what he answered with he said if you're gonna stay down there in that horrible position i'm gonna punish you for it and so jared anderson got rocked and then he went to drop him from there we see an example of jared either being too close with his jab or stepping in with his jab here he's too close and he realizes he's too close because as he jab he realizes he wants to back up but that fast ass telephone pole just extends and clocks him in the jaw before he can really get out of there but that his reach his, his punch style makes it really hard to establish a jab because he's going to be waiting for that. And that's what we see consistently. 
before we get into those final sequences i just want to highlight how nonchalantly brutal he is for one he's doing very little to get a lot of reaction out of jared he's just just him uh, uh, approaching and slightly moving his body is getting jared to react a lot waste a lot of energy but coley's using none and then on top of that his punch style it's not very explosive not not too much body weight behind it it's like arm punches so it doesn't use a lot of energy on his part but they are heavy they are heavy 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 shots and then his defense he just whoop, gets underneath these shots and all all the while he's just swarming you with these combos that are just they don't look like they they should be landing but they are because they're sneaky and then on top of that you try and go close in to clinch but then he has the frame he makes space and then he sneaks in another uppercut he just has a lot going on that on the surface level it doesn't seem like there would be a lot going on then again he puts you in a dilemma because first again the defense yes his defense is weirdly effective he puts you in a dilemma because you want to close in the clinch he breaks it up hits you with these sneaky uppercuts then you want to back up and make distance and then he just whoop just catches you with with these right hands that are like five feet long i said i was going to get to the finishing sequence but we're about to just to highlight the heaviness of his hands is he throws out a little bit of a jab right there mostly probably just like a probe but then he throws out like a half of a jab and the whiplash from him throwing half of a jab is just it speaks for itself but Coley is going to set the pace and the rhythm of this exchange and so his that's why his timing is so good in this instance you see anderson trying to uh find a way to slow this man down leaning on him framing trying to initiate a clinch but Coley is not allowing it and he approaches and he kind of gets out of the way of that uppercut and then he lands across boom and then follows with an uppercut and then anderson's probably a little bit hurt by that anderson's trying to find any room to 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 breathe to counter to see stuff coming and then these these shots just keep sneaking him because he likes to duck and bacoli saw that earlier and he's just building off of what he already did he's timing those ducks and he's kind of forcing him into this set rhythm which is why he's able to land these shots so clean and then he sees him about the duck again it's, it's the same thing cross uppercut cross uppercut cross uppercut and he set the rhythm and he just lined them up but this angle doesn't do justice to how nasty that uppercut is so we're about to look at a different angle by the way look at the impact of that cross when it lands on that left hand it's, it, it almost broke his wrist and he tries to turn potentially to catch a left hook that's probably why he keeps he's probably trained to to catch the left hook so that's why he probably turns and gets underneath like that but this uppercut the his neck the way it turns it, uh, uh, again like a aj versus vladimir klitschko type uppercut a francis and Ngan ganu alistair overeem type uppercut but it's it's so low effort it just goes it's just an uppercut uh, it's not even like it's not even a crazy uppercut it shouldn't be but it was uh and his neck just turns so violently but jesus christ please give credit to jared anderson for having balls enough to take a ridiculously tough and dangerous fight with a boogeyman of the division when he absolutely did not have to he could have and maybe you can argue that he should have took the safe path of building up more experience but he chose the more difficult path and he didn't have to uh, but it's commendable that he did uh, win or lose and he accepted his defeat like a man so give him credit in that aspect regardless of what you think of him he did the warrior thing the last part we'll look at and probably the knockdown that should have finished the fight is the exact dilemma we were talking about you try and close the distance there's those sneaky uppercuts waiting for you on the inside and then he's gonna try and close the distance again and then there's a sneaky uppercuts waiting and this time jared is like he still has his senses about him so he's like let me pull back because he realized him ducking well then he does duck and that's why but the dilemma comes you want to close the distance you get work there you want to back up those telephone poles just shoot out and then he lands another one and then that's basically when the fight was guaranteed to be over now bacoli is a great exemplar of why i love the heavyweight division i love the lower weight class divisions because of the speed the athleticism the high skill but in the heavyweight division you get the mutants with a strange background some of them old some of them young some of them fat some of them skinny some of them fast some of them slow some of them with great chins some athletic 
he's you get a lot of strange individuals and and he's absolutely one of them and that's why that's why i love the heavyweight division uh and he's now become one of my favorite fighters if i'm being honest but i want to see him versus big bang uh zhang or zhang however you want to pronounce it tell me your thoughts on that matchup i'm out